Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So this video is going to be a little bit different than most of my other videos. As you might have noticed, I didn't release a video last week and I almost wasn't going to release a video this week either because, well, I've been working on my CR10 and I wanted to do just a quick tutorial on how to replace the controller board and upgrade it with nice touchscreen and it should have been really easy just drop it in connect a few cables maybe do a few tweaks and software and that would have been it uh, but well as it turns out things aren't that easy and I uh, went down a whole other rabbit hole trying to figure out some stuff it still is not working so I still can't make a tutorial about it or anything like that but I did learn a lot of things along the way. So instead of not releasing a video at all this week again and pulling my hair out even further about this, I decided to make a video and show you what I've learned. Uh, there still is a lot of things that you can learn from this as well and that will probably help you if you're planning to uh, upgrade your printer as well. I've also been thinking a bit about the direction of the channel and the kinds of video that I make and I created a poll that you can get at, at with a little eye up here and I would be really really glad if as much people uh, as possible can answer this poll so if you're watching this video pause it right now and go answer the poll. Uh, the question that I'm asking is do you guys like these kind of videos where I don't finish a project like I'm not finished, it doesn't work. Um, and I'm just gonna sh show what I did, uh, sh tell you what I learned and hopefully uh, b bring you some new knowledge or some ideas. Or do you prefer it when I just not release vi a video for a while uh, and just finish the project first and then make a nice structured video where everything works out in the end? Please let me know uh, what you prefer, what you like. And so. I can kind of make a decision on how to go about these kind of things in the future. Now let's get to the actual video itself. And at this point I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and this project. They make extremely high quality PCBs that I've been using on many different projects. They're really great. And they actually just launched a new store where you can buy all kinds of different cool projects that other people of the PCBWay community have made. And they also changed a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, adding more customizable features to their site and dropping the prices on some of the products as well. So make sure to check them out at the link below and see all the new goodies that they have to offer. But now let's get back to the actual video part. My goal with this upgrade was a couple of different things. For one, I kind of didn't like uh, the way that the CR10 electronics worked. Uh, this separate box next to it was just really bugging me and the screen had two broken lines in the LCD for a long time which made some really crucial information uh, not visible like the print progress and stuff like that. And I've also wanted to add some stuff to it. For one, a second extruder and I also have a laser uh, that I just got that Endurance Lasers sent me. And I want to mount that laser onto here as well, make like some kind of like quick release system where I can swap out the extruder with the laser. Um, for all of these things, I need a bo the board that had some more functionality. And just to add the bed leveling sensor, I had to sacrifice the beeper on my CR10 board and it just wasn't going to work out for what I had planned. I also have seen a lot of these uh, really cheap uh, LCDs, touchscreens, and like three and a half inch uh, for 3D printers and I thought I wanted to try these out. They looked really nice and like a much more modern way to control your printer than with the dial and with turning, turning and pressing and then the screen slowly reloads. That really in this day and age uh, shouldn't be the only way to control a 3D printer. So I bought a relatively inexpensive board off of AliExpress. Uh, it recommended this screen to, to it, so I thought, yeah, it basically probably connects to it, like the LCD screen on all the other printers, so you can control all the functions from the screen. The board itself is based on the Smoothieware board, which is a really great open source uh, software. Uh, it is kind of a competitor to the whole Marlin universe that a lot of the, the printers are using. Uh, 
should be really very easy to customize and to make work with the board. So what I was expecting was to connect all the things up to it like I had on the other board and connect the display and be able to tweak all the things on the display uh, through the SmoothieWare software. When I got the, all the hardware I decided to put it underneath the printer itself uh, to kind of hide it away a little bit better and make it more space efficient. So I put an acrylic sheet on here, uh, spray painted it black, uh, screwed it into the frame. That looks perfect and I extended the feet a little bit higher so that everything fits underneath, mounted the power supply, all that good stuff. I also printed this simple mounting bracket for the display and hooked everything up. Then when I turned it on, well, the screen was upside down. I thought, well, doesn't really matter. Uh, I can probably just change that in the software. And of course there were no instructions whatsoever with the board, but, but I found relatively quickly that there is a little file on the SD card of the main board and that's a config file. So I opened it up and most of it was translated to English as well. Some of the comments were still in Chinese, but I was easily able to figure out everything and was able to punch in all the data and the configuration for my printer, uh, nice and dandy. But somehow all my changes, they were affected by the printer. Like when I inverted the axis because they were going the wrong way, that did invert the axis. But the screen, I wasn't able to turn around anything and all the other options that I supposedly changed for the screen, this, still was all wrong. So I was really frustrated and I didn't understand at all uh, why this wasn't working. I then found out that the screen actually is running its own microchip with separate firmware. So I thought well then I go and customize that as well. But after quite a lot of googling and also contacting the manufacturer uh, well you can very easily replace all the different symbols on their make your own custom splash image and all of that, you can't modify any of the functionality. And when I went in to investigate even further, th this screen isn't directly compatible with SmoothieWare. And it's not connecting to the like screen part of the microcontroller. It instead is connecting basically over USB. Well, while it's not using the USB port, it is using the same serial connection to it. So you can't use the USB port and the screen at the same time. So what the screen basically is, is a separate controller that just sends G-code to the main controller, which then does all the stuff. So changing things like which direction it moves and how many steps per millimeter acceleration, all that good stuff can easily be tweaked in the firmware for the main board. But all the stuff, concerning the screen itself, like what the different commands are when you press it and all of that can't be changed at all. So what I did uh, for now is, is, for one thing I printed a different uh, holder for the screen to so put it on the other side so it at least is right side up, but I also connected up uh, Raspberry Pi to it uh, with Octo print on it. I had that set up uh, before for the printer but never really used it, just was kind of playing around with it. If you guys are interested, I can do a separate video on Octoprint, but I don't know that much about it yet either. But basically what it is, you put it on a Raspberry Pi and then it, you can control your printer through a web interface. It is like in the good old days when I controlled my printer through Repetier hosts with a USB cable, but it is all over the internet and there's like a lot of functionality. I can send custom G-code, I c could set up webcams, make time lapses with it, all that fancy fancy stuff that I don't really need. But the main thing that was important for me was to directly send a g-code commands so I can test the different functionality. That way I was able to confirm that the X and Y homing worked uh, well. It didn't work when I pressed it, the homing on the LCD screen but that probably was sending some wrong things. Like it did home but you can't home just one axis and the C-axis limit switch is not connected. I only have the BL touch sensor, which until now I somehow haven't been able to get working. I connected it up like on the SmoothieWare website where, where it's recommended. I put in all the configuration into the firmware and for some reason it's just not talking to it. Like it gets power and like moves up and down the self test in the beginning, but it does not send any 
signal to the controller and if when I tell, give the G code to move it up, up and down like the little pin in it it doesn't respond either so it's like not communicating at all. And another really weird thing that happened was the bed heating. Well it works perfectly when I turn it on it starts heating up the bed like it should. For some reason it does not turn off. Like when it reaches the temperature where it should turn off it just keeps going heating at basically full power. I was able to at least turn off the bed, like the turn off command would actually turn it off, but when it reached whatever temperature I set it at, it would still keep going basically infinite and not stop. Why? I have no bloody clue. For the hot end it works perfectly fine, no funny business there at all. It must be some kind of firmware configuration or something that I am missing. I'm gonna have the firmware, like I have it configured right now for me, linked on my GitHub down below. Maybe some of you have a bit more experience and wanna help out. That would be really appreciated. So what I would recommend for you if you're trying to upgrade your electronics is either go with something like Marlin based, like a RAMS with an Arduino, which, well, it isn't that fancy, but it is a lot more customizable and the community behind it is a lot bigger as well. But if you want to go with the smoothie board, make sure you get a display with it that is actually compatible. I'm gonna have the article linked down below on the smoothie website, uh, which lists all the, the compatible screens. Now they are all like not fancy touch screens. And the really cheap screens that you can use with the Marlin don't work natively on the smoothie board, but there are some rather cheap uh, screens available for it and I might actually pick up one of them but the only other thing that you need to consider though is when using a screen directly interfacing with the board is that it uses up a lot more I.O. pins and a lot of the pins that were recommended to be used with stuff like, like the bed leveling sensor or laser or, or whatever uh, are pins that are actually maybe used by the screen itself. So that is something that you need to watch out if you're doing that and that I need to consider uh, when deciding if I want to get a different screen. If I get it to work, I might actually uh, stick with Octoprint though and maybe get a little, little touch screen for the Raspberry Pi and attach that to the printer instead since it does have a lot more functionality. So if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like down below and also leave me comments uh, what I what do you think about this kind of video? Uh, now I just had the camera in one spot, but like that's because I just now decided that I was gonna make a video about this. In the future, I might do videos where I keep take you along uh, the ride, uh, more vlog style, instead of making like a proper, nicely lit uh, e-roll where I talk about all of it. Uh, that way I can also, easily just release it uh, on a more regular basis, like actually have a video every week uh, instead of just having a video every week but then missing like every other week. And if you didn't like this video and you rather have just the regular videos like I've been doing before, then leave a comment down below about that as well. I really wanna hear your guys' feedback. So thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video.